Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Riley Philpotts here, and today we're going to be discussing a topic that's close to my heart, and that's being assertive. In our world today, it's so easy to be a I can't even say that word. I meant to say pushover. It's so easy to become a pushover in our modern world. So, let's learn how to be assertive. Being assertive and knowing what you want is totally different than being hostile and belligerent. You just have to know what to say with confidence. And confidence is the key. And it's the key because every single person wants to be more confident. More confident in their social life, more confident in their romantic life, more confident in their work life. Everyone knows how to be confident, but not everyone knows how to be assertive. Being assertive falls in the gap between passive and aggressive. If you're passive in voicing your opinion, you may come across as a pushover and submissive. With the ladies, that's not that attractive. Trust me. And on the other end of the spectrum, if you're aggressive with voicing your opinion, you may come across hostile, or even worse, a bully. At the end of the day, assertiveness boils down to communication. That's basically what it is. It's a skill that can reduce conflict and build self-confidence. And it's especially key in the workplace, relationships, and in your personal life. It's a life changer. So, without further ado, let's just jump straight into it with tip one. And tip number one is understand what being assertive actually is. Being assertive is an interpersonal skill. It's a skill that allows you to demonstrate your healthy self-confidence while standing up for yourself while still respecting the rights of others. When you're assertive, you are direct and to the point. And you're kind of a badass, or as we all know, a bad You can't expect people to know what you want. So you speak up. You speak up calmly and with confidence. And you do this to ultimately get what you want. All right, now with tip number one out of the way with what assertiveness is, Tip number two is keep your communication style in line. When it comes to being assertive, communication style is critical. And the key is to be respectful to who you're trying to communicate with. Pay attention to body language as well as the words you say. And make sure you're congruent in your words. Never expect people to read your mind either. Unless they're a certified tarot card reader, then by all means go for it. But most cases they're not and you have to be careful with this. So if you want something, speak up. And if something bothers you, say something. Look confident when you're asking a request or stating a preference. And let me demonstrate. Stand up straight, look the person in the eye, and say what you want to say. Tip number three is understand and accept differences. Assertiveness doesn't mean dismissing other people's points of view. Just as you state your own opinion, you work to understand the opinion of other people. Don't allow differences to upset you or make you angry, because you'll come across as a Stay calm and remember that differences don't always mean you're right, and that the other person is wrong. Tip number four is super simple, but effective. Like, super effective. It's speak simply and direct. When you're practicing assertiveness, it's important to speak in a way that doesn't imply any accusations or to make the person feel guilty. Avoid guilt trips and tell the person how you feel. Speaking your truth with candor shouldn't make other people feel wrong. Be simple, direct, and concise, and speak what you know is true to you. When asserting yourself, remember that less is more, and it comes down to simplicity. Keep your requests free of neandering explanations or long-winded requests. Tip number five is to exercise the power of I. See, nowadays we barely use the word I. It's more like, what can I do for you? What do you need help with? What can I do for you? Not what you can do for me or I. Make it a habit to say things like I think or I feel. Let's stay far away from aggressive language like you always or you never because these statements trigger people and that's not what we want. They shut down conversations and don't make you look good. I statements allow you to be assertive without alienating or eliminating other people. Keep I statements in the back pocket when you're trying to practice assertiveness. Tip number six is to stay calm. Just as I'm staying calm talking to you guys, you guys need to stay calm when you're being assertive. Being assertive might make you excited, but that excitement can come across as aggression. As weird as that sounds, people nowadays get upset at the tiniest things and we can't help. We're trying to avoid upsetting people by getting what we want at the end of the day by being assertive. So staying calm is a keystone to all of this. Learn to stay cool and calm when expressing yourself. It will make you more confident and at the end of the day, allow the other person to relax. Calm mind, calm speech, calm action. Tip number seven is to set boundaries. Boundaries are the rules and limits you set for yourself to decide what you will and won't allow. You're a bad and you don't want people walking all over you. So what do we do? We set boundaries, but healthy ones. Setting boundaries will empower you to know when to say yes 
and when to say no. Assertiveness is like any other skill. It takes practice and time to get it just right. Keep working on these techniques and soon enough, you won't be taking from anyone. Oh, we're not done yet though. We got a couple bonus tips. You thought I was gonna leave you hanging. Trust me, I will never do that to you guys. Bonus tip one is practice saying no. If you have a hard time turning down requests, say no. Say, no, I can't do that right now. Don't hesitate, be direct. If an explanation is appropriate, be brief. Bonus tip two. Use body language. I know we've been talking a lot about body language, but I can't, I can't oversell its importance. Body language is the first thing people see and judge you on. So if your shoulders are back, you make direct eye contact, they'll be looking at you in a totally different light than if you were all huddled into a ball and barely looking at them. Because we don't want to be cowarding towards people. We want to be asserting our dominance on people. Keep an upright posture, look them in the eyes, lean in a little bit, maintain a positive or neutral face, kind of like what I'm doing right now. Pretty good, right? I've been practicing. You can practice this in front of a mirror. If someone walks in on you, it may seem a bit weird, but just say, this dude on the internet told me, so they'll get it. And bonus tip number three is to start small. Let me just imply again, being assertive is a skill and it takes time and practice to develop. So before you jump in, going to your boss, demanding a pay raise, or to your significant other saying that you don't cuddle me enough, start small with baby steps. That's all the tips I have. And remember, if you've spent years silencing yourself, becoming more assertive won't happen overnight. If despite your best efforts, you're not making any progress in being more assertive, I would consider formal assertiveness training. Because at the end of the day, you're making your life better. And the payoff will be worth it. By becoming more assertive, you can begin to express your needs and feelings more easily and with more fluidity. You can even find that you get more of what you want as a result of it, which is pretty goddamn awesome. All right, so that's basically gonna wrap up the video. If you've made it this far, consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. You've made it this far, you're invested in my content, it's obvious. Don't need to be shy, it's okay. I appreciate it. Just go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And that'll do it for me. If you have any more suggestions on what topics I should cover next, what topics you want me to cover next, leave it down below. And again, thanks for watching. Phil Potts, out.